And so I've tried to teach my kids that just because you see a massive house or a fancy car or an amazing vacation does not tell you anything about the financial situation of that person at all. They could be drowning in debt. Smart, money, parenting. All right, everybody, welcome back to Smart Money Parenting. Uh, Chad and I are hanging out today. We've got a really fun topic for you. It's this idea of rich versus wealthy. And, you know, we look around all the time, Chad, and you see people that look super rich on social media, online, all the gurus want to be showing off their Lambos and mansions and jets and everything else. But we want to talk today about true wealth. That's very different than being rich. Very different. And, and today we, we are talking about the financial stuff. So clearly when we talk about wealth, we're, ta- we're also talking about health and family and the things that actually matter. But today we're talking about money stuff, financial. So I get this question a lot about rich. I've heard little, my, someone told my little kids that your family's rich. I didn't really like that. I don't really love that word. You see a, a, a fancy car drive by a Lamborghini and they're like, whoa, that person's rich. And just me being in this business of wealth management for 21 years, I know a lot. Like I've, I've had tens of thousands of conversations about money. And I see people all the time living way beyond what they can afford to do. And, and they are by no means rich and they're for sure not wealthy. And so I've tried to teach my kids that just because you see a massive house or a fancy car or an amazing vacation does not tell you anything about the financial situation of that person at all. They could be drowning in debt. They could have no savings. They could be using their retirement funds to buy the Lamborghini. Like we have no idea what their actual financial circumstances are. And I say that because I've got clients who are humble and modest and they're wearing these lame tennis shoes and little cargo shorts and walking around, right? Yeah, there's Scott raising his hand. And it's like, people have no idea the actual financial success and wealth that these people have built up because it's not showy. It's often quiet. And yet, at the same time, I've I've seen people who I know their financial situation is actually not great. Uh, They're they're in over their heads. They're spending to keep up with a, a social media lifestyle. And yet people believe that they're extremely successful and wealthy and they're not. So I think the important distinction is, first of all, I don't love the R word rich, but um, wealth, wealth really allows for, I think wealth, wealth to me means you've got multiple streams of income. And it also means you've got time and freedom. Rich to me means that you are really focused on possessions, material things, and status. Expenses. In status. Yeah, that's a great one. In status. So I think yeah. teaching your kids that there's a very big difference between rich versus wealthy. And it's actually impossible to tell from the outside. Yeah. You do not know. I've told my wife that. And I said, you, you just have no idea because I see all the private stuff. I see the confidential numbers. You don't know what people have and what they don't have. Right. You can't see it on the outside. You just can't. We have to teach our kids to never judge a book by its cover. You know, I've been in I've been in meetings where, you know, you and I are in a bunch of masterminds. We go to events and we're on stages and talking. And I my favorite conversations is like the old guy or the 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 lady in the room, and they they're not, they don't have the pomp and prestige and the crazy Rolexes and the swag and they're not braggadocious. And then you get into this, just like you have lunch. And then all of a sudden you realize this person is a stone cold killer and they have, <laughs> they have 800 employees and they're building all this stuff. And they're just so they're, they're humble. They're frugal. They're simple. They don't show it on their sleeve. And we have to teach our kids not to judge a book by its cover. And right. a lot of times people want to get these things to look good. Fake yeah. it till you make it. Well, it's the status. It's the status, like you said, the lifestyle status. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think rich is loud and wealth is quiet most mm-hmm. of the time. And, you know, true wealth is built brick by brick over time, creating these passive revenue streams, investing for the long term, having delayed gratification, living like nobody else today so you can live like no one else tomorrow. I mean, we, 
we do that as a family. You know, I, I, I have a great story. When we started our franchise company, we, we became the largest school fundraising franchise in America. And I drove a Honda Accord. And we would bring in people from all over the country to stay in our, uh, you know, come to Phoenix, see some schools. Um, and I'd take them around for the day in my Honda Accord. And, you know, one of our investors and partners told me one time, he's like, you got to get a nice Audi or a, a Tesla or a Lexus or something. You got to show like you have money. You're a million, you're a multimillionaire. Why are you driving a Honda Accord? And I looked at him and I was like, you know what? About 40 people in a row now have joined our business because of the way I live. Not, mm -hmm. not just because of the business, but because the way they see the owner living. I'm simple. They know the business is great. It's an incredible business. The item 19 is great. The profits are great but they see me living as a simple person and they don't want to see a guy that they're paying royalties to, to run this business, going and buying all these crazy things and living this lavish lifestyle. 40 people would drive in my car throughout the day. And they would say after afterwards, like I want in because of you, not mm -hmm. because of the business, not just because of the business. I love right. the way you live. I appreciate it. I respect it. And I want to do business with someone like you. And that's the, that's the point. Rich is loud and wealth is quiet. And so um, we got to make sure that our kids understand this. They have, you know, and that doesn't mean that everybody that has nice stuff is poor and, and everybody no, that doesn't have nice stuff is And, and in wealthy. fact, like, I think it's relative too. I think I would say in my right. experience, wealth is relative. So there's nothing against having nice stuff. I right. mean, I, I have some nice stuff and I travel to nice places too, but there's nothing against that. But, but the difference between wealth and rich, wealth is really that it's sustainable long-term. You can really, really afford the things that you do. You've got some time freedom. You have multiple streams of income. You've invested wisely, like you said, invest for the long-term. Rich, I think, is like scrambling on a hamster wheel to keep up with the status and to project an image to the outside world. Wealth doesn't really care what everyone else thinks right. about their financial success. Like wealth is wealth. It's just like you have it or you don't. And right. I, th I think it's critical that as we're talking to our kids about these things, it's like, do not take these status symbols as the actual benchmarks of success because they're not. You just don't know. And, and I'm not saying those things are good or bad. Like I don't have, I've never had a, a crazy fancy car, but I've got nothing against the crazy fancy car. Right. If you can afford it. Uh, great. If, if your cars are your thing, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're nice... not going, you're not going into debt and leveraging yourself to the hilt to get exactly. nice things or to have exactly. this nice trip with your family. Right. What you're doing is you're using passive income. You're using the yep. profits. You're using good money skills to be able to get great things. And that's the point here is, you know, trying to be rich is an anxious lifestyle. Living wealthy is real freedom. That's true freedom. And that's like, that's like you said earlier, it doesn't matter what other people think. We're living a lifestyle that we're comfortable with, that we're happy with, that gives us the freedoms that we want, freedom of time and freedom of money and freedom of relationships and freedom of purpose. That's wealth at the end of the day, not status symbols or trying to look yeah. in front of your friends. The status symbols come with a lot of baggage if, if you don't have wealth. Like trying to stay, trying to pretend to be rich, especially trying to pretend to be rich. That's what I see on social media a lot. It's a lot of younger people. It's the good, when I see the financial gurus giving out really crappy financial advice, and I'm like, come on, man. And there's, and I see it's got like tens of thousands of likes and views. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, like, people are buying this. Like people are somehow buying this hustle guru, this hustle financial guru guy who probably doesn't have much at all in, in terms of his own wealth, but he's got the flashy social media account that's talking about how to get rich quickly. And it's, it's, that's where you run into traps, teaching your kids to avoid the scams that entice people. It's like that little carrot that's over something dangerous. Like people will lose a lot of money when ch trying to chase a rich lifestyle. Uh, but building wealth is sometimes boring. It's patient. You grind, you do the hard work. I often use the analogy when I used to give seminars when I was at Merrill Lynch, I give seminars about being an investor that is either a farmer versus a miner. So the miner is digging for gold and, and really just digging out there, trying to strike a rich and find a nugget of gold, but usually they end up and they die broke. 
the farmer is harvesting and reaping and sowing and patient and just minding their own business, growing their business. So as an investor, seek to build long-term wealth, not to be short-term rich, because what goes up must come down. And, and if you're a flash in the pan chaser, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So I think that's important for smart money parents to think about is making financial decisions that build wealth and teaching your kids not to chase the get rich quick stuff. Yeah. And if you have nice things at home, talk to your kids about how you bought them off of passive income and interest and good investing and good money skills. If and you, if you didn't, and, then, then maybe take them back or sell them. <laughs> like, and if you are living the rich you know, trick, maybe think differently about it. Switch it out. You can always downgrade pretty quickly and your kids will respect you long-term for it. I got to tell you this story before we end. Um, yeah. One of my favorite books ever, ever that I've ever read in my life is called The Billionaire Who Wasn't. And you know, one of the principles we teach on smart money parenting is, you know, you make, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. I think there's another thing about rich versus wealthy, rich people. That's them. It's me first, me focused. That's a great point. Yeah. Wealthy people are other focused. They have that freedom to think elsewhere. They're gen they're more generous. They they're can think bigger and be more generous. Yes, that's right. And so this book is about uh, Chuck Feeney who built duty free shoppers. Um, turned into a four and a half billion dollar company. You know what? You when you go to the airport, it's duty, yep, duty free. Right? They started yep. all those businesses around the world, and they launched it like in the '60s or '70s. Anyway, turned into a multi billion dollar home run. This guy had billions and billions of dollars. He turned the entire thing over to the um, Atlantic Philanthropic Trust, put the whole thing in a charitable trust to give away, and nobody knew until he died wow. a few years ago when the book came out. Wow. He would go around with a $10 watch, plastic watch, a Hawaiian shirt, cargo shorts, and sandals. He would travel around the world and he would meet these people that needed help. And they didn't know him from Adam. These universities in Dublin and these like hospitals that needed help. And these like nuns in like, a, a, or a monastery or random people that he would just meet them. And then all of a sudden secretly, like a few weeks later, a month later, they, this group would get a $20 million check a hundred million dollar check. Wow. And that's what he did. He would open up the newspaper and he'd look around and say, who needs help? This guy lived like a Disneyland private lifestyle. No one had any idea. In fact, he was on the Forbes top 100 for a decade, for 15 years, he was on the Forbes 100 and he was worth nothing because all of it was in a charitable trust. And he lived, he was wealthy. He wasn't living this rich, lavish, lavish lifestyle. He was extremely wealthy and he was extremely generous. That awesome. is my picture in my mind of like the beautiful life. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so to sum it up, rich versus wealthy, like teach your kids the difference. Wealth is long term, it's generous, it's diversified, it's patient. I like that actually. Rich is impatient, wealth is patient. So, that's we it. hope you got something good out of this today. Thanks for listening. Give us a follow, a like, a share. And uh, always go to smartmoneyparenting.com and gravystack.com slash smart. And, uh, you know, follow us for more info on being a smart money parent. Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate it. Take care, guys. It takes more than money. If you want to succeed, you got to know what to do with it. You got to take the lead. You got to give them confidence. You got to make them smart. If your kids are going to thrive, now's the time to start. Smart money parenting. 